Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. We are recording this podcast on Sunday morning, June 30th, and the tropics, of course, are getting very active. We have this area just east of Barrel. This is 96L. This is moving off to the west-northwest, following a similar path, National Hurricane Center now giving this a 70% chance of development in the next seven days, 40% chance in the next 48 hours, currently moving west at 15 to 20. And then we have this area over here now in the Bay of Campeche that has a 50% chance of becoming a tropical depression the next couple of days before it makes landfall in Mexico. Of course, the one that we are really keeping an eye on now is major, soon to become major hurricane barrel, category four barrel moving toward the Windward Islands. We knew, Jeff, that this was going to be an unusually busy season, but this is a first to have a major hurricane in this area of the Atlantic. And from when we were looking at this 24 hours ago, barrel has become very impressive, impressive eye there, nice exhaust system. It's building for itself, the circulation, the convection, and the size of barrel all have changed dramatically over the last 24 hours. And folks in the Windward Islands need to get ready for barrel as it's going to start making its way there early Monday morning. They'll start to see heavy rains and winds from barrel starting tonight. And, and Jeff, I know hurricane reconnaissance has been out uh, um, investigating barrel. What's the latest from what you're seeing? Yeah, we just got the no aircraft in there. And we also have a, a U.S. Air Force plane in there later this morning, but the no aircraft is in there. So this is the first aircraft mm -hmm. that has been in the storm since it's formed. And, uh, you know, we've done very good on the satellites. Uh, pressure is 968 millibars. Uh, they did record flight level winds of 110 knots. So this is a major hurricane, strengthening major hurricane approaching the windward islands and, and if you go back to the satellite here you can see very symmetric now thunderstorm activity all the way around the around this eye feature that is mm -hmm. developing and this eye is starting to to kind of clear out a little bit and so this is well on its way uh to being an extremely dangerous hurricane and, and the hurricane warnings for the windward islands are in effect and, and this is going to be a very significant impact probably the strongest hurricane to impact the Windward Islands in about 20 years since Hurricane Ivan back in 2004. So uh, this is going to be a big deal for the Windward Islands. And, and like you said, this early in the season, um, you know, this is really something you'd see probably in late August than compared in, instead of uh, late June. And so uh, something certainly we're going to have to monitor. And then, of course, the track through the Caribbean. Yeah, I'm expect to become a major hurricane and stay a major hurricane, according to this forecast and intensity track at least through Wednesday at 2 a.m. Then it, right now, this track showing it to move south of Jamaica. That's shifted a little bit south from where it was yesterday, yesterday as far as the National Hurricane Center track. And the, this official forecast track, keeping it as a hurricane early Friday morning, approaching the eastern Yucatan Peninsula. Where it goes from there, the Forecast is uncertain at this time, but folks in Belize along the eastern coast of Yucatan and really all the Yucatan Peninsula need to have their guard up for this storm. And as far as the U.S. Gulf Coast, I think we'll have a better idea, Jeff, around midweek what the forecast track is going to do beyond this current official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Yeah, it's pretty confident through day three or so about Wednesday uh, where we're going with this. And so we'll, we'll take a, a look at the uh, model guidance here and see the differences that we have uh, in the in the guidance. So coming into, you know, very good clustering here through day three or so south of Jamaica uh, and, and even still some decent agreement even, even further out in days four and five approaching the Yucatan here. You can see the the guidance clustering is, is a little bit further to the south. Um, one thing to kind of point out, this is the deterministic Canadian well up to the north. That seems to be uh, an outlier at the moment. And then the, the mean here of the Canadian ensembles also appears to be somewhat of an outlier uh, further to the right and to the north. And so really you're kind of looking at this, this guidance clustering through here. So northern Belize, 
southern Yucatan, uh, maybe even up into the central Yucatan, and then getting out into the Bay of Campeche. Um, we'll we'll see. This is this is when things start to get a lot more uncertain. As you know, what are we looking at here? What what kind of system are we looking at? Obviously. Uh, we're still looking at a hurricane potentially into the Yucatan, but how does the Yucatan disrupt the system? What what kind of shape does this come out into the southern Gulf of Mexico? And, and then what's going on further to the north in, in the United States as this gets out into the southern Gulf of Mexico by next weekend? So this would be July 6th or 7th time frame. Um, and this is this is an interesting plot. And so this is the consensus or the the ensemble means over the last several runs of the models and as you can see there's there's very little change through osage jamaica if anything it's been shifting southward over time a little bit and then the same thing here in the western caribbean you know kind of shifting to the south and so there's there's decent agreement here there hasn't been a lot of big changes uh in the track forecast or the reasoning through the caribbean so this is a fairly high confidence forecast of this going south of Jamaica, south of the Cayman Islands, and then approaching the eastern Yucatan, northern Belize. And then you start to get into some uncertainty here um, as you get into the southern Gulf of Mexico. Big high pressure, of course, right now in place across the Texas and the southern United States. So that is what is forcing the system more to the west. But as we get to this weekend, we may see some, some breaking down of this high pressure over the southern plains with a trough coming in from the northern Rockies. How does that break down? How deep is that trough? How strong is Barrow when it gets into the Gulf of Mexico? How far south is Barrow when it gets into the Gulf of Mexico? All of these are big question marks to the eventual final path of where Barrow is going to go. And I know people just want to know right now, well, is it going to hit Texas? Is it going to hit Louisiana? Is it going to stay south of New Mexico? And the answer is we just don't know. We really don't know what is going to happen here once this gets into the Gulf of Mexico. We're obviously watching the trends. The trends over the last 24 hours have been a little bit further to the north uh, in the southern Gulf of Mexico, but that doesn't mean this can't still go into Mexico um, or even a little bit further south. But there's more weakening here in the Western Caribbean than currently anticipated, a little more wind shear, then this could drive barrel further to the south and west. And so, you know, this this happens with any tropical system out in time. The further out in time you get, the less confident we are uh, on what could potentially happen. And so, you know, the message going forward here is to keep up with the forecast at least once a day since we have a system down in the Caribbean, um, potentially getting into the southern Gulf of Mexico next weekend. This would be after the 4th of July. Um, and, and just keep a, keep up with up to date with the forecast and what potentially could be happening with this system. And one of the other things we've been talking about is the, is the guidance, um, uh, the intensity guidance you can see compared to the track guidance, which is fairly confident through the next four, three to four days, the intensity guidance is kind of all over the place. Um, you know, we're probably on the going to end up being on the higher end in the short term, just based on the satellite appearance. Uh, this morning what the aircraft is finding so we may be closing in on the upper end category three or, or low end category four through the islands um, and then this kind of weakening here through the central caribbean some of this is a little bit of weak westerly wind shear some of this also may be the trade wind acceleration in the eastern and central caribbean that's going to push this a little bit faster and so you have a little bit of weak westerly wind shear in the upper levels and a faster moving storm and that creates a little bit more of a shearing aspect but the, the kind of interesting trend over the last day or so has been not as much weakening in through the Caribbean. So maybe weakening from a, a high end category three or category four down to a category two hurricane. Um, and then more substantial weakening occurs here, but this is due to the land interaction with uh, the Yucatan Peninsula or Belize. And so we're just gonna have to keep an eye on this. We're gonna, there's, there's still some uncertainty, I think, in the intensity forecast. As we get into the Western Caribbean, of you know, are the is the shear correct, and, and everything that's going to be happening out in the Western Caribbean, um, I, I would say four or five is out. Models usually don't handle uh, the upper level conditions very great. They can they can be off somewhat. And, and the other thing is this is this is fairly and then fairly an intense hurricane coming into the Eastern Caribbean, and it would be not saying impossible, but it would be relatively rare to see some sort of rapid weakening occur unless there's really strong shear or something. And I'm just not seeing that 
you know, there's there's some modish here as you get further to the west. Um, and I think the models have been kind of catching up with this and, and, and showing a little bit more favorable conditions to maintain the intensity or at least a slower weakening than what we were seeing 24 hours ago or so. So we'll have to see again, still what we're expecting, big impacts, significant hurricane impacts to the Windward Islands are imminent within the next 24 hours. And then potentially some impact to Jamaica, the Caymans, it just depends how close uh, the storm comes to those areas and also how large the wind field becomes, how large the impacts um, become as it moves further to the west. And then obviously looking increasingly likely we're going to see some sort of hurricane impact on the Yucatan, um, possibly northern Belize. And right now this looks south of the Cancun, Cozumel resort areas. Now, does that mean the impacts could extend north of those areas? Absolutely. But right now it looks like the, the trend is the, the center of this heading further to the south. Of course, still five days out, that could change around a little bit. But I, I've had a lot of questions of people. Oh, I'm heading down to Cancun and Cozumel, going on a cruise, da 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 da, da. Um, The cruise ships are definitely aware of this. They will make changes to the itinerary to keep everybody safe. Um, but if you're going down to the, the Western Caribbean, any of those locations, you need to be paying very close attention um, to this forecast going forward this week. And, and, and then also what your local officials are telling you to do there. So your hotel folks, they will be the ones that will tell you if this is coming in your direction, what you need to do to make sure you stay safe. But that's the, that's kind of where we're at right now. And of course, you know, the, the thing going forward is just to be mindful this is out there and keep up with the forecast as we go through next week. I know a lot of people kind of tune out next week, 4th of July week. It's right up there on like with what you see around Christmas. And so just keep in mind that this is down there and then potentially, um, you know, something that could get in the Southern Gulf of Mexico as we get towards next weekend. Yeah. As you pointed out, if you're, if you have travel plans down at the Yucatan, Cancun, Cozumel, anything like that, definitely want to check with local officials there and maybe reconsider um, your travel plans there. If you're traveling anywhere along the U S coastline, Texas coast, for the 4th of July, keep your travel plans right now, but definitely keep a close eye on what's going on with Barrel. And this graph, Jeff, interesting. Yesterday, we just saw the, the trend, the downward trend was strength, and now it's kind of flattened out, as you pointed out, not dropping off as much, possibly staying a Category 2. So we'll see how that plays out. Jeff, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We'd like to remind you to subscribe and share the Weather Insights YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button and feel free to share it with friends and family to keep up on the latest of what's going on in the tropics and join us on the next Weather Insights podcast.